welcome back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my next guest is a Tony Award winner you know from The Wire, Treme, and Jack Ryan. He now stars as Willie Loman in the Broadway revival of Death of a Salesman. Please welcome Wendell Pierce. <laughs> Great. Nice to have you on. Nice to meet you finally. Uh, great meeting you. This is my first time on a late night show. Really? Yeah. And, starting good. And this is my good favorite. One. Starting out with the best. Well, you know, this is a, it should be an easy transition for you to late night because here you are in a Broadway theater. Not yes. everybody's got this for their late night show. Oh, definitely. And, you know, fans like myself have enjoyed you in, in, in Jack Ryan and, and The Wire, um, but you're also a stage actor. Yes. 37 years ago, I made your Broadway debut in what was the play? The Boys of Winter by John Peel Meyer. It was a Vietnam play. Mm -hmm. Right? So it was in that era. It was very serious. People were sitting in the theaters. Mm -hmm. Really great. They, the lights go down and they're ready for a Broadway play. And then we would come in shooting M16s. <laughs> People went crazy. We didn't last that long. <laughs> Now you're starring as Willie Loman yes. in Death of a Salesman, one, one of the, the, the great tragedies of, of the 20th century by Arthur Miller. And, but this is actually the first time there has been an all-black Loman family. Right. What does the black experience in America... <laughs> what, what, is the, what, is, what does the black experience in America bring to those roles that we haven't seen before? All of the themes, we are doing the play as it is. Nothing has changed except a few slight things. We're doing Death of a Salesman and all of the, the themes, all of the, all of the conflict that was originally uh, in the play, that is a part of the play, the condemnation of this pursuit of materialism and wealth and capitalism and how you can lose sight of that as a man who's pursuing this sort of delusional approach to something that he doesn't understand the first wealth in life is the love of family and not materialism. It is heightened, that unobtainable American dream is heightened when for so many black families, especially in the, in, in the 1940s, 1949, you see all of, the, all of the insults and the violence of micro and macro aggressions that are a part of racism. Uh, you could not get a loan to even pursue getting a house. You could not be uh, obtaining any of the American dream that was there. I, and every night I, I think about all of the generations of people who made a way out of no way. And in spite of it all, they still gave um, hope to their families. And that was the one thing that Willie fights for, Willie Loman, and our production is fighting no matter what. With all of the obstacles that are placed in front of him, he still feels as though he can give his family and his sons especially something and leave back a legacy. But he doesn't realize that if he would just take the blinders off, the legacy of love that he's given his family is the thing that he should be proudest of and is the thing that is obtainable and is tangible and not this pursuit of the illusionary American dream that is unobtainable for so many people. You know, the carrot on the stick that draws you in but ultimately disappoints you. Uh, it's timeless because we go through that now, that gulf between the haves and the have-nots, and how so many people are pushed aside and not given the opportunity to truly, truly fulfill their entire humanity uh, at the expense of the few, to give those few rich folks some ease. So many people are expended, you know, and are expendable. And that was the condemnation and the cautionary tale that Arthur Miller was writing. It is all heightened when it's an African-American family because we understand that so much of it was institutionalized with segregation and, uh, and Jim Crow. I'm from New Orleans, so, you know, even when I was growing up in the 60s and 70s, it was just vestiges of that, you know. In segregated South at that time, in segregated America, you couldn't even go to a park, a green space in New Orleans, except one day out of the week, Negro Day. And there was advocacies of all of these Americans who said our values are so much better and so much more. And that's what Arthur Miller 
really heightens, do not crush this American family with this idea of the unobtainable dream and let this be the canary in the mine so we won't lose this wonderful country we have. We only have a, a moment uh, more here, but I'm going to ask you a, a, a big question. Okay. And, and that is about tragedy itself. What do you think the, the what do you think tragedy, because this is a truly, a, a truly a tragic story, mm -hmm. but one that is um, uh, emotionally cathartic, like a good tragedy should be. Yes. What do you think the purpose of tragedy is in our lives? People don't understand why they go to a comedy. Why do people go to a tragedy? As I said before, it's the canary in the mine. It's the cautionary tale. There but by the grace of God go I. Don't make those same mistakes, that hubris that a man like Willie Loman makes. That's the reason we gather in a theater like this and turn out the lights, what thoughts are to the individual where we toss and turn and reflect our own lives, our triumphs, you know, our disappointments, where we hope to go. We gather like this so we collectively can reflect on who we are, where we're going, what are our values, Stephen? And then collectively decide what they are and then leave this theater and go through those doors and try to act on them. And that is what tragedy is about. This is what the human condition is. And if you make these choices, it can destroy your life. So learn from that. Let this be a cautionary tale so you can do better. And it's so emblematic of what this play was and the experience that I have personally because my father, 97 years old, was at the opening last night, right? This, this, African, this African American man who saw, loved this country when this country didn't love him back, but still said to us, you can't get lost in America, literally and figuratively, go out and do whatever you can to fulfill your, your dreams. And last night, he came to New York around the time this play was written. And the choice he made, instead of what Willie made, which was a tragic choice on Willie's point, my father chose to come home and the one promise he made to his sons was, I will never leave you. And he gave me love and he gave me time. And that allowed me to fly. So. So lovely to talk to you. Thank you for being <laughs> Thank here. You. Death of a Salesman is on Broadway now at the Hudson Theater. Wendell Pierce, everybody. We'll be right back.